Boker Tov, everyone. Shalom Alechem. Bonjour. Buenos dias. Guten Tag. Guten Morgen. Top of the morning to you. Hope you're having a great day. This is the uh, prep day, and we are here for the sixth Aliyah of Parashat Tazria. It's been a great week so far. It's been a busy week. Um, it's one of those weeks that have flashed by. We are getting ever closer to Pesach and looking very much to uh, afford to all of that. So glad you are here. A couple of things on Pesach really quickly while it's on my mind. Uh, April 22nd at sundown, uh, that that Monday, is actually the night in which we have uh, the Passover Seder. The very next day, which is Tuesday, April uh, 23rd, that is actually the day of Pesach, and that's a Yom Tov. It's a Shabbat. That's a day that you should not go to work. Uh, children should stay home from school. It's a holiday. It's a Yom Tov. Uh, so we're going to have a service on that day. Uh, this year, just because of logistics and the way that everything is played out, which is a great doing, this is great, by the way, we, we decided that we're going to have a Minka Mariv service on that Monday evening. Or excuse me, Tuesday evening, pardon me. Um, for those of you who are locally, that'll be here about 7 o'clock in the evening. We'll have Minka followed by Mariv which will be followed by Havdalah, which will be followed by the first counting of the Omer. So we begin to count the Omer that, that night as well. Seven days later, the following Monday, is also a Yom Tov. So it just so happens this year that uh, the both of the Yom Tovs of Pesach fall during a weekday. So the following, to, uh, following Monday uh, is a, a Yom Tov as well. Again, no work, kids stay home from school, that type of thing. Um, so I want to make everybody aware of that. And so, uh, that is the situation. And, uh, for those of you who have kids in school and you need a note, um, reach out to Katura. I've written many of notes and letters over the years, uh, for schools for that type of thing. Um, so anyway, just want to let you know about that. Um, so, and of course, get rid of Hamet's. Hamitz, 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 uh, and work towards that thing as well. Brukish, and today we're going to be looking at the Parasha Zarad as it relates to anger, okay? And this in, these insights today come from Pituch Rehotam. Pituch Rehotam, um, who I believe, if I'm not mistaken, was uh, from the world of the French. Um, he brings down some insights. Usually his insights are are geared more towards the sod level, the esoteric level, the, that type of thing. And so we're going to be looking, he's going to look at this from the standpoint of anger. We'll be discussing this and the negative trait of anger and why it's, a, it's affiliated with Zarat, which again is typically referred to as leprosy. So good morning to you, Lori. I hope you're doing fantastic. Ahava, hope you're doing great. Nelly Grace, good morning to you, ma'am. Good morning, Marita. With all of your children running around, uh, <laughs> hope you're doing great. Yigal, Zakin Yigal, that is. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, Peaches, formerly from Georgia, hope you're doing great. Uh, Clayton, good morning. Chris and Crystal, good morning to you. Ariella, hope you're doing fantastic. Uh, who else? Isaac. Isaac Oat. Uh, hey, Isaac, it's been a minute since we've seen you. Glad you're back. Kelly Allard, hope you're doing fantastic. And uh, who else do we have? Uh, Devorah, good morning to you. And uh, Christopher, hope you're doing great as well. Baruch Hashem. Um, uh, Denise, good morning. Buenos noches to you. And uh, who else do we have? Shoshana Brenner, Bokertov, Katura, Bokertov. Sergio, Bokertov, hope you and the family are doing great and, and hope to give our best to Johnny. I know he uh, listens, but he can't always uh, comment because he's probably. Busy refinishing cars or something like that. Hmm. Good morning, Emmanuel from Nigeria on the African front. Good morning to you, sir. Pushing back the uh, frontiers of ignorance there in, in the continent of Africa. Thank you for doing that. Um, oop, my little thing jumped up. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Uh, yes. Who else do we have? Jatoua le Suton, le Ton. Kristen. Good morning, Kristen. May Hashem bless you in your Arab tonight and give you wisdom and fill you with insight and help you to uh, just have the words and uh, to, to share with your, your guest. And may your guest's heart be open 
to truth and may they turn away from falsehood and may they come to, to see that uh, that they need a deeper understanding of the Tanakh and the Gospels and the merit of the Messiah Yeshua. May your era be blessed. Uh, Lola, good morning to you. Made your first hala. Well, mazel tov, Lola. Um, watching there from the United Kingdom, pushing back the frontiers of ignorance in, the, in, the, uh, in Great Britain. Thank you for doing that. Levi, good morning to you, sir. Um, and good morning to Michelle. Michelle Berner, good morning to you. Hope you're doing great. And Leah there and uh, with Eliezer in the beautiful state of Florida. Good morning to you. Ami, good morning. Uh, hope you and Claire are doing fantastic and uh, doing great, Baruch Hashem. Um, you know, we need to have a, um, uh, like a shul uh, main event night, like bowling and pool. And we did that once at main event, eh, Ami, and uh, we brought in the kosher pizza. That we, they let us have like a little room. Maybe Claire can invite her friends. Does Claire like the bowl or like do laser tag and that type of stuff? I'm serious. I'm really, I'm really asking because I was thinking about that just the other day. I was talking to the Zakens about it. I was like, you know what? We need to have another event like that. Maybe uh, some teenagers can get together. We can bowl, and uh, I can embarrass myself bowling. That would be fantastic. They they would probably enjoy it. Uh, good morning, Sarah Merritt. Hope you're doing great. Franklin. Good morning, Naomi. Good morning. Hope you and the fam are doing great. Leah. Good morning to you. And uh, who else do we have here? Hope I didn't miss anybody so far. Uh, uh, did I say good morning, Clay? Good morning, Makia. Hope you're doing great. Brenda Jones, good morning. Yaakov Keith, hope you're doing great. M uh, uh, Michael Garcia, Mikael Garcia, good morning. M Michael, are you uh, are you new? I don't recognize the name. Uh, if you're new, welcome to you, sir. Radomir, good morning. Watching from Scotland, good morning, Radomir. Glad to see you. And who else do we have? <laughs> Uh, Seth Shmuel. Good morning, Shmuel. Glad you're able to join us. Hope the uh, move into the new house is doing great. Mazel tov on that. Um, yeah, Ami says that, that Claire likes to uh, bowl and, and all that. So yeah, that'd be fun. We need to make that happen. Yeah, she'd love that. Great, great. We had we did it. You know what? We're going to make that happen. Katura, Katura, please reach out to main event and let's get something scheduled for that. Okay, maybe uh, obviously after Pesach. Um, after Pesach, we can get something scheduled for that, and uh, that's great. Let's make that happen, please. Uh, Ramona Turner, good morning, Ramona. Ramona, are you new here? It's your first time to uh, be on the program. Uh, hope you're great. Uh, Rabbit scene. Rabbi needs an excuse to do laser tag. No, no, no. I won't even do laser tag. I'll just sit it out. It's not true. <laughs> Uh, good morning, Robinson. Good morning, Baraka. Good morning, Baraka. Hope you're doing great. All right. Uh, Ramona says yes a few times here. Well, welcome, Ramona. Glad you're here. Thank you for being a part of the program and joining us. That is uh, that is great, 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 great. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. So glad you guys are here. Thank you so much for being here. I love uh, chatting with you and interacting with you. It's a lot of fun. And so um, let's look at this parasha, parasha uh, Tazria, from the standpoint of dealing with anger. So, Bituke Holtem is commenting. Let me get a, a drink of coffee and clear my throat. Excuse me. Thank you. By the way, we're in Fort Worth, Texas, specifically in Saginaw, Texas. Um, good morning, Eve. Also watching from the United Kingdom. We have more and more people watching from the United Kingdom. That is very excited. Hello, France. Where are you, France? My native people. Anyway, I digress. We are in Saginaw, Texas. Uh, I say that because I take it for granted that people know that, but we learned one time that people don't know that. And one of our members, Atara, was watching for a long time on the program, didn't realize that she literally lived down the street from our synagogue. Uh, so in any case, we are here. And if you are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we would love for you to come see us. And if you're not in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we would love for you to come see us. All right. So it's, he's commenting on um, Levit Vayikra, Leviticus chapter 13, verses 9 through 11, which says, if an affliction of Zarat will be upon a person 
he shall be brought to the Kohen. The Kohen shall look, and behold, if it is a white seit on the skin, and it has changed the hair to white, or there is healthy live flesh within the, the zait, it is old zarat and the skin of his flesh, and the Kohen shall declare him to be contaminated. He, the Kohen, shall not quarantine him, for he is contaminated. Okay, so... Again, these are uh, spiritual uh, illnesses, spiritual diseases. And so Pituzge Hotam says, this verse may be alluding to the trait of anger. As we know, this trait is directly related to haughtiness. When a person clothes himself with haughtiness and imagines himself to be a great person to whom no one else can compare, he becomes more prone to anger. The Zohar in volume 2 182a writes that nothing can be thoroughly nothing can so thoroughly defile a person inside and out as much as anger for his soul immediately leaves him and is replaced by a foreign god okay regarding this the verse says you who tears up his his soul in anger, Job 18.4. If he should want to repent, he needs a great deal of holiness and zeal unto his soul will return to him. Wow. Good morning, Tara. Hope you and the fam are doing great. And, and Naomi, I'm glad to see that. We've been missing you guys. So that's really, that's a big yikeser. So this it's it's not uncommon. Uh, Rebusin has taught about it in Musar classes before. Uh, I've mentioned it. It's something for us all to be um, cognizant of is how bad anger is, and it's so easy. We live in a world that is full of anger, um, and it's so hard because of social media, because of road rage. It's just so hard, right? Um, people attack us and so forth and so on. It's so easy to be angry. And then, of course, you have the, all the other issues of life. Um, you have narcissism and people who are narcissistic. Uh, you know, people, by the way, uh, nar do, mentioning narcissism for a moment. People who are narcissistic, uh, they come across as as ex extremely arrogant, extremely haughty, right? Um, but what's interesting, if you talk to psychiatrists and psychologists about that mental illness, uh, what the root of it, which is really intriguing, the root of it is, is a pathologically low self-esteem. Um, a... And, and in fact, it, it gets it, it gets so bad, it gets into self-loathing, which is so weird because it, it manifests itself in being arrogant and haughty and throwing people away and treating people like garbage and, and so forth and so on. But the point, I, the reason I bring this up is because we, we have to check ourselves, and if we are feeling arrogant or haughty or if we're prone to anger, we have to wonder do I have a an unhealthy an unhealthy self esteem? Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, all of us should have a healthy self esteem. First of all, let me let me pause here from excuse me. More people join join the program. Good morning, Haniel. Good morning, Milka, and good morning, uh, Joel. Hope hope you're doing guys guys are doing great. But going back to my thought here, we should all have a healthy self esteem, and this is very important. Because we're talking about anger, and one of the ways that we um, we avoid uh, anger is by having a healthy self-esteem. Having a healthy self-esteem means that you are capable of recognizing your strengths and your talents and your value without being angry. Without being arrogant, without being haughty, without being prideful. And a little bit of pride is okay, by the way. A little bit of ambition is, is okay, by the way. Pride and ambition and and uh, so forth is, is, um, uh, is not necessarily inherently negative. 
You can have pride in what you do. You can be proud of your achievements. You can you can have confidence. And this is another one. Um, a lot of people who have low self-esteem uh, interpret confidence as arrogance. I'm confident in what I do. Listen, uh, I mentioned uh, Zeke and Yagalm. Uh, a couple days ago, and the fact that he does woodworking uh, stuff, he's very good at it. He's 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 really good at it. Uh, we had a, uh, we had a uh, um, a drawer in our in our our kitchen that uh, the back of it just fell fell off. It like you know it's 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 older and it disintegrated or whatever. I gave it to him to repair. Um, I asked him if he would could do it, you know, and and I wouldn't know what to do. Uh, to me, it'd be to have duct tape on it or whatever. Uh, so. Uh, he gave me the back, the drawer. It, it looked like it was brand new from the factory. You know, and so it's okay for Zeke and you all to say, hey, look, I'm good at woodworking. I'm, I'm good at it. I, I do, you know, I'm, that's what I do. It's okay. I, we should be able to have a, the, a, good, a good enough and healthy enough self-esteem that when somebody is confident in what they do, that we don't say, oh, you're just being prideful. By the way, this is just an aside. I want to encourage everybody not to do this okay when somebody says let's just say hypothetically <clears throat> that you have a good voice and therefore when you sing like i do um everybody's you know it, it sounds good like me and so <laughs> i'm kidding but anyway about me but when somebody has a good voice and you sing a, you sing something you sing a song and it's really good and Somebody says, wow, you know what? Wow, you sang that so beautifully. You have such a great voice. Don't do this. No, I no, I I don't. I no, no, I it's not really that great. Don't do that. You might think that that comes across as you're just being modest and you know, but it's not. It's called false humility. And the person with whom you're speaking may not pick up on it, but I'm telling you right now, it, it actually produces a negative character trait. When somebody, when you have a good voice, this is just an example. This could apply to anything. When you have a good voice and you sing a song and people say, man, that was really beautiful. Here's what you should say. Thank you very much. You know, thank God I have the the, the gift and I, I appreciate, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed the song. Thank you so much. That's being gracious. That's being humble. That's being confident. That's being, uh, you know, normal. But to say, oh, no, I can't. No, no, not me. No, don't do that. OK, because that comes across as it's false humility. And false humility is actually a symptom of pride. OK, I've run into this a lot with people. Uh, but I, I don't want to go into a bunch of examples. Um, as a rabbi, you kind of practice psychiatry. So just in case you're wondering. But getting back to this. Okay, so we want to avoid haughtiness. and We want to be, avoid arrogance. We want to avoid anger. And one of the best ways to do that is to have a healthy self-esteem. A healthy self-esteem. Right, Kathy? Good morning, by the way. Hope you're doing great. So these horrible consequences of anger do not apply to the anger expressed by the sages when they speak to defend the Torah or to give rebuke because such anger is for the sake of heaven. Okay, great. So there's such thing as righteous anger. Okay. Um, that's true. Yeshua got angry. Yeshua was not the, <clears throat> um, uh, the metrosexual uh, pacifist that everybody paints him to be. Um, so there's such thing as righteous anger. You can be angry, right? You, there's such thing as self-defense. Somebody asked me, uh, just this week, actually, I was having coffee with the Zakens. It's a beautiful couple that came in and a former Marine, a Vietnam era Marine, much respect. But, you know, his wife asked me, um, if I was a rabbi when I was in the Marine Corps, of course I was not. Um, and she says, okay, so you're a rabbi now. Had you been a rabbi in the Marine Corps, would you, um, you know, would you have been a, basically would I, would I have been a um, conscientious objector, meaning I don't want to fight? And of course, and I told her, I said, no, no, I, no. 
uh, you know, so you, in other words, you don't have to be religious and be pat passive. Okay. But at the same time, we can, we can control our, uh, our, our anger and not to be, uh, not be somebody who is haughty and arrogant. Good morning, Louise. Hope you're doing great. Lee Spicer there now, formerly from, uh, Australia, now living in middle America, Baruch Hashem. So, so we can have righteous anger, he says, provided it is, it is, it is not for their own honor. So we can defend Torah, we can defend the Bible, but we have to be really careful that we're not defending ourselves. This is really hard because uh, a lot of times, in you know, in, when people are okay, so people are get confronted with biblical truth, their beliefs as Rebetzin has says, somebody bumps their cup. And is Kristen's going to have an Arab tonight, right? It's going to go great, Kristen. You're, you, the people that you've invited over are going to listen to truth and Hashem's going to move upon their heart. One of the things that happens sometimes is oftentimes when you're having um, these conversations, people's cups get bumped, their religious beliefs they've held maybe all of their life gets challenged and they go into ad hominem attacks they attack you they attack the person okay you're a liar you're a false teacher you're blind you're ignorant you're you're arrogant you don't know what you're talking about you need to read the bible haven't you ever read the bible so they're attacking you and they're not they're not attacking if you will what you're saying with relevant coherent um scripture because they can't they can't they don't know what to do it's kind of like you know you're having an argument about history and you you present a bunch of historical facts and the person doesn't know what to say because they don't have the facts and they just look at you and say you know what you're fat I mean, you're like what, what a, i'm you're a false teacher you're a liar you're a judaizer so you have to be careful and this is so I'm 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 preaching to myself here. I'm, I'm I'm talking to myself here. So so hear me, hear me out. You have to be careful that you don't get down into that because what you're really dealing with in that situation is somebody who is expressing extraordinary low self-esteem. When they call you a false teacher, or they call you a liar, or they call you you don't know what you're talking about, you just need to read your Bible. They're talking about themselves. It, it, and that's what you have to understand. It's like the narcissist. They have such low self-esteem. They're frustrated that they don't they don't know what they're talking about. And so they just start throwing personal attacks at you. They're, they're, what they're really trying to do is get you off so that they'll you'll stop destroying their beliefs. So what do we do? And this is the hard part, right? We need to have compassion. I'm not, what I'm about to say here, I don't mean to, say that people are like animals, okay? Don't misunderstand, but I'm going to use an analogy. It's like if you brought a dog into a vet's office and the dog was injured. How many of you know that have had dogs before that when they're injured, they they will they get they can get kind of vicious. Like you try to touch them to see what's going on, they'll bite at you, they'll growl at you, and they'll snarl at you. They're doing that why? Because they're hurt. They're hurt. And so does that bother us? Like we we know when the little dog is injured and, and we're going to try to help it, it's biting at us and snarling at us, raising its little fangs at us. Do we go, oh, we slap it and say, what's wrong with you? Why are you doing this to me? No, they're, they're injured. They're hurting. We know that. So we ignore it and we try to find the remedy. So when people are lashing out at you, when they're telling you you're a liar and you're a false teacher and and you know you're a Judaizer, and you don't know what you're talking about. You just need to read the Bible. If you read the Bible, you'd know something. So when somebody says that to you, or or to me particularly, that's so ridiculous, right? Like I need to read the Bible. Really? So what does it mean? It means that they're like that hurting little dog. They're hurting. They're injured. You've just destroyed their religious world with, you know, truth. 
They're mad. They're not. And so they're lashing out. Why? Because they've got an injury. So what do we have to do? We have to help them over overcome the injury. Does this make sense? Something for us all to remember, because we don't want to be angry people. We don't want to be um, haughty and arrogant. And we don't want to get into the ad hominem attacks like they do. And we're here it's supposed to be to help people, to help the little dog. They're not a dog. They're a human. But you know what I mean. It's an, it's an analogy. So it says, otherwise, it would be considered anger. Okay, if we're trying to defend our honor, then it's about anger. It's just angry. We're just being, we're just being angry. Okay. And by the way, sometimes this takes a lot of work when I'm talking about, because some people can be very just downright vicious and mean. And they're, 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 as somebody recently said, their attacks, their arguments are sophomoric. Okay. Sometimes their points are downright silly, childish. Okay. And so, therefore, it's very frustrating. But it is what it is. The author of Mishnah Chassidim, he writes, says that when a person becomes angry, he blemishes Hashem's name. Which is, in this case, he's talking about the name Adonai. As well as Hashem's name Elohim, which have a total numeric value of 151, which is the same as Kasa, uh, Kas. Kaas, anger, plus one for the word itself. So how can we understand the verse? So it says, an affliction of Zarat. This refers to the trait of anger. The word Zarat has the numerical value of 761, adding one for itself, which is the same as Hashem's names of Adonai and Elohim combined as follows. The numerical value of Hashem's name Adonai is spelled out in full meaning that you take each letter, the Aleph, Dalit, Nun, uh, Yud, you, and you take the value of those spelled out letters, plus adding four for the original letters themselves, is 675. Hashem's name Elohim has a numerical value of 86. Their combined value is 761. This indicates that if a person possesses the trait of anger, he blemishes these names of Hashem of the nine Elohim. So if, good morning, Yosef, and good morning, uh, practical. If our, if we have anger, and, and listen, there's a lot of people out there who um, basically who, uh, what, what's the phrase I'm looking for? They, they kind of pride themselves, pun intended, on having the trait of anger. I'm a fiery person. I'm a, I'm a, I have a fiery a spirit, though. I have, uh, I'm very, you know, I, I have red hair. I'm, I'm Irish. I'm Spanish. I'm French. I'm German. It seems like every culture has an angry, angry. I'm Indian. I'm Japanese. Whatever it is. And I'm angry. And I'm, this is, I'm a, I have a fiery personality. I have a short fuse. People, a lot of people pride themselves on that. It's not something to be prideful about. Somebody who has a short fuse is somebody who is extraordinarily immature and has very low self-esteem. I'm telling you right now, and, and listen, by the way, this is just not my opinion. Rabbi Tversky of Blessed Memory, who was a psychiatrist and a rabbi for real, I play one on TV, but he actually had the degree. He actually says that one of the biggest problems we have in our current age is low self-esteem. If you will develop a healthy self-esteem, a lot of these issues will go away. A healthy self-esteem. A health. A, a, we listen. A, a low self-esteem can be damaging to so many relationships. You know. Let me give you another example. People come in. And they say. They say to me. I had a couple one time. This has been a long time ago, by the way. A long, long, long time ago. A couple of decades, <clears throat> but it's always stuck with me. This couple left. They came in. They stayed. They were they were part of our ministry for a little bit, and then they left. I met him one time for coffee. I met the husband for coffee. I just want to know wait, wait, what happened. It looked like you guys were having a everything was great, and so you know what's the, what's the concern? They said, "Well, every time we come to the to the meetings and you're teaching, 
You're you're speaking right to us. I said, oh, okay. And no, no. What this guy actually thought was, he actually thought that my message was literally and intentionally directed to them. How can I possibly know what was going on in their life or whatever struggles they were having or, you know, whatever their, whatever. I don't, how can I possibly know that? But he, he actually thought he wasn't kidding. He wasn't joking. He actually said to me that he felt that I was being vindictive because I was teaching my messages and was, and every time they showed up, they felt like I was speaking right to them. He wasn't kidding. And there was nothing I could do to try to ease his concerns and help him to understand that I just teach what I teach. And if it applies to you, you know, that's kind of called conviction. And maybe, maybe God's just trying to tell you you need to work on whatever it is you feel like you need to work on. But I use that example. It's an extreme example. I know you're listening to me today and you're thinking to yourself, God, that's crazy. And because it is. But what I want to use that example for is because in this case, that gentleman and that lady had such a low self-esteem. They literally thought that I was making my 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 sermons, my droshes based upon their life. And so their so low self-esteem was probably close to the narcissistic side, which has that, if you think about it, that's extremely, extremely arrogant, right? That I would actually prepare a drosh just for you. But and that, that and week after week, well. That's the problem. See, when our when our self esteem gets so bad, we that's we flip and become narcissists. We flip and become arrogant people. We have to be very careful about this. He says, and it, it changed the hair to white. So it says, in other words, he switched names Elohim, and be the, in other words, what he's saying here, change hair to white is is a is a so level understanding that he switched the name Elohim for another god. Or there is healthy life flesh within the state. This alludes to the evil angel Samael, who is referred to as the end of all flesh. Bereshit six thirteen, and it's, this is that verse six thirteen is in the Zohar volume one sixty three b. It talks about this. Haughtiness causes a person to seek authority and control over others. Yikes. What is the root of haughtiness? Pituke Hotem says, Pituke Hotem says, a haughty person wants to seek authority and control over others. A lot of this stuff has to do with control. Have you ever known anybody? Don't raise your hand. Have you never had anybody in your life that you felt like was trying to control you by their anger? You had to walk on. Hey, okay, let me let me ask you this question. Has anybody in your, have you ever known anybody in your life that you have to walk on proverbial eggshells around them? You know, the, the expression, for those of you who are not in the United States, I don't know, this, this, this may uh, um, apply worldwide, but walking on eggshells means that you kind of have to tap toe around people because you never know what you say or do may set them off that their personality is so unstable that you don't know if they're going to be happy or mad when, when you see them depressed or sad, you have no idea. Okay. Now, listen, if you're such a person that you're, you're that you feel like people have to walk on, you need to fix that. Okay. Whatever you have to do, talk to the rabbi, talk to a Zakin, talk to Rebbe Zine, get professional counseling. Okay. But that is a form of control. That is a form of control. Okay. Because you're the person is trying to control the people around them by being unpredictable. The form of control. Um, and don't let people control you. We will not walk on eggshells around anybody. Okay, because that's not our problem. It's not that we're being mean or we're not being we're being insensitive. It's just that we're not going to let people control us. Okay, 
So if you're that unstable and something I say may set you off, then, you know, you need to get help. And uh, we can see my door is always open. We can talk and chat about it. We're going to be focusing on you, however, and not on triggers. You're somebody who's like, I, tri I get triggered. That's your problem, not people around you. Okay. I, trust me, it's true. Okay. And see, as, and when anger is added to a per, and, and by the way, don't do that. That triggers me. Don't say that. That triggers me. That's a part of control. That's haughtiness. That's arrogance. That's that's seeking authority to control others by controlling their speech or their actions so that you feel okay. It's not okay. I feel like there's some people that may be having a hard time with this. And that's okay. Sometimes facing facing our fears and facing our struggles is not an easy task. But you have to face it. And stop trying to control people. Okay. Um, it says, and when anger is added to a person's haughtiness, Samuel is in is fully carried out. So in other words, when we allow this personality of anger to really manifest and like be who we are, then we're really giving the Satan, curse be he, control of our life. That we're turning our life over to the Satan, curse be he. So it says the words live flesh refer to the evil angel Samael, who was appointed over the end of lives, all that is all flesh. In other words, what it's saying here is if you see that you've got this, the Zarat, that means you have the, the live flesh, which means you have the anger, which means you means you have the Samael. You have this the Satan curse be because he's the flesh. So this is not living in the spirit. So it says, now through the trait of anger, Samael has gained life and status beyond the power he already attained through the person's haughtiness. The word basa'et, with the sa'et, basa'et, can be understood instead of from the sa'et as being from the flesh. This is this being so that Samael has gained life and the status that it is a uh, an old zarat. The trait of anger is rooted in this person and has acquired its place. Now, remember, going, going back to the very first thing we talked about in this series this week is that, I think it might have been the first thing, but anyway, I, I've lost track of my days. But we talked about the fact that Zarat is something that would manifest in a person who is otherwise righteous. Okay? In other words... You might be a good Jew, and you're good. You're you're good in so many ways. You light the candles. You make the challah. You wrap feeling. You wear a seat seat. You're keeping the commandments. You love God. You study the Bible. It's the Tanakh. You know. Uh, but you struggle with anger. You struggle with low self esteem. You struggle with trying to control people. You struggle with trying to make people make you happy. Don't say this. Don't do that. That triggers me. This triggers me. That's where all control. You walk on eggshells. I don't want to say anything. I don't want to trigger him. I don't want to trigger her. That's control. That's that's doing trying to do this with people. Don't stop it. Okay. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not in control. Okay. They made me feel sad. You know the rabbis say, no one can make you feel sad but you. You're in control of your emotions. Rabbi Torsky will tell you that. Nobody can make you feel sad but you. Okay? So, but remember, so therefore, what I'm talking about here is a high-level refinement. You're talking about people who are eating kosher and keeping the Torah and loving God and loving Yeshua. And now we're talking about refining this character trait. This is a high-level refinement. And it this is the the the, the issue of uh Zarat. Okay. So one last thing here. <clears throat> one last thing uh as we're we're um wrapping up. 
And and listen, for those of you who may be listening to this program and you're you're struggling because you have these um, this type of personality and you know what you know so you're listening to me maybe you're maybe you're a little bit upset about what I'm saying um I, I get you I understand okay but press through press through and take my advice. My advice is not based on just my own thoughts, but it's based on the thoughts of, a, of, a, of another rabbi and a professional psychiatrist. Take my advice and you'll be a happier person. And more than that, you'll notice that people want to be around you more. Nobody wants to be around the person they have to walk on eggshells around. No one wants to be around the person who's volatile. Nobody wants to be around such a person. We want to be around people that we know, you know, they have a stable personality. Now, look, we all have bad days. We all have trauma. We all have things going on in our life. And we should all have grace for, and, and compassion for one another in those situations. But those should be far and few between. Okay. But concluding here, it says, having turned completely white, it is pure. Anger that is not for the sake of heaven exchanges Hashem's name, Elohim, which is holy for that of other gods. But anger that is for the sake of heaven, to the contrary, banishes the other gods and replaces that with the name Elohim, which is holy. So if anger is used to clarify words of Torah and discover the truth, then holiness has been extracted from the forces of impurity. And if anger is used to give a rebuke, then the people who receive this rebuke have been taken away from the forces of impurity and brought instead to the place of holiness. Now, on the day that healthy flesh appears, it shall be declared to be contaminated. He wrote above that anger stems from haughtiness, that a person feels himself to be important and deserving of honor. Consequently, he feels angry towards others, towards people who do not honor him enough or who do not speak to him in a right manner. In contrast, the humble person views himself as if he were already dead, unconcerned with his own life, unconcerned with, his, with having honor. Therefore, when he expresses anger, it's not for his own honor, but rather for the sake of heaven. On the day that it's healthy, the flesh appears, etc. In other words, if he acts for his own honor, if he views himself as alive and deserving of honor, then he is contaminated. End of our Aliyah today. Thank you so much for being here all week long. I hope that these programs have been inspiring and inspirational, and most of all, have drawn us closer to Hashem and His righteous Messiah, Yeshua. Please be sure and donate to the program. If you in enjoy Lapid Judaism and you like what we teach here, then please look at the description of any video and find a way to give. If you're a member of Lapid Judaism, you consider this your home and your family, and I'm encouraging all of us to be tithers, to actually give the tithe. Uh, and that is our challenge. We're really asking people to, to make that commitment, especially this time of year at Pesach is the great time to do that because it was at Pesach that people would come to the Holy Temple and declare, I have in fact given the tithe. So this is a great time to make that commitment and trust God that he's going to be your provider. I look forward to seeing you in the synagogue tomorrow. Everybody have a wonderful Shabbat and wonderful Arab Shabbat. And may it be God's will that we have a wonderful Sabbath tomorrow. And may the words that are given uh, be words of life. Shalom aleichem to all of you. Look forward to seeing you manana.